Uh, what are your first impressions of the conference? Uh, I will say first that this is a historic uh, day for Cyprus uh, because since the envisionment of uh, creating this uh, cluster five years ago at the Cario Association, uh, this now becomes a reality and we could actually see the last two days Cypriot companies uh, showcasing their products in defense uh, and security sector and this is a great achievement this is just uh, the beginning for Cyprus uh, so in general the conference was very successful we have got uh, great feedback uh, from several organizations, from people from the Ministry of Defense, from police, and several other organizations that participated. And uh, everybody looks forward for the next year's event. Uh, in recent articles, we read about the uh, use of uh, UGV in the current war. Uh, do you believe that in the forthcoming years, uh, operating a UGV will replace the fighter? Look, uh, at the moment we have seen in the uh, recent war of Ukraine the use of uh, UGVs for various uh, applications. So this is just the beginning, I would say, uh, of the UGV era, I would say. Um, it has been used for various applications beyond cargo, as a weapons, uh, many other applications. So as this progresses and we see more systems, um, we may see more intelligent systems that partially can be placed, I believe, the human fighter. So I can see within the short term of the like of the five, ten years to have a partial replacement, but uh, a full or let's say a fully almost replacement of a human fighter, I think will go beyond the 10 to 15 years and uh, this has to do also with the advancement of the humanoid robotics. So uh, you can imagine that the human fighter has also some other abilities and unless we develop the technology combined with the UGV to be able to, except from of course the artificial intelligence and also the uh, the features that the humanoid uh, has, which is the biomechanics, which at the moment the technology is not at very high level. So I see it a fully almost replacement in the 10 to 15 years from now. Mm -hmm. uh, recently you have launched new UAV and drone products. Can you tell us more about these uh, products? Yes, in this uh, conference we have uh, exhibited some new versions of our, and upgrades of our existing UAVs. Uh, for example, in some of our fixed UAVs we have added the option of parachute. Um, in uh, the multi-copters we have added options like the IP, that means IP56, that means it can operate in rain conditions. Uh, we have added also anti-jamming capabilities in, the, in our drones. Um, and these are just some features that comes actually from requests from our customers. Uh, and the other options that uh, we see is also different kinds of system. We have a new system with this uh, an electric VTOL, a vertical takeoff and landing, uh, which provides some other advantages uh, that than launching manually because this is automatically you can launch it uh, from where you stand and it, the drone come back to you exactly where you are. This is quite interesting for specific uh, applications uh, in the defense. Uh, Dr. Filimus, what are your plans for the future? Now, the plans uh, actually in the future are uh, focusing, I would say, in the design and development of new UAVs and UGVs. On one side is, is making them bigger, like size, especially in the drones currently we are in the few kilos payload. Uh, we, so in 2023, we're going to launch a new product which is above 10 kilos in the multi-copter series. And uh, within the fixed UAVs, uh, I think that will take us in 2024 where to develop much bigger ones requires a much bigger infrastructure. So we aim that within the 2024. Now in the sector of UGVs, uh, what we see is the development of let's say the intelligent part of the UGV, which is actually the different applications where we integrate uh, artificial intelligence in our sensing and our live video feed. Uh, so this 
We had actually the Heron, what was demonstrated in the conference, a quite large uh, UGV with a payload of 250 kilos, tremendous capabilities and a lot of applications. So what we see in the future is more or less develop the artificial intelligence part. And another interest in that we have slightly shown in some of our presentations is the combination, the multi-systems combining drones and UGV for specific applications. Uh, so even the European Union has different applications where how UGVs and UAVs can collaborate together uh, because with the UGV you can travel in a, let's say in a rough terrain environment autonomously and if for example it's carrying a drone it can launch a drone and, and then recover it back charge it so different capabilities so that's some of the plans we see in the future and we let's say discussing with potential customers uh, of this kind of multi-systems we call it and uh, and in addition, another interesting area which is uh, in the state of the art at the moment is the swarming mm -hmm. drones. So having more, let's say, drones collaborating together, which of course is much more complicated. So we see that, I would say, within the next three to four years uh, in our plans. Thank you very much. Thank you.